James Webb Space Telescope, 10 new terrifying images from outer space. The James Webb Space Telescope is a beauty to behold. Although expensive, it is unarguably the best telescope known to man. You might not agree with us. However, the most spectacular images of our galaxy have been taken by this telescope, so it has no rival. Are you interested in seeing some of the most amazing outer space images? Stay till the end of the video. Welcome to our channel, where we provide you with facts related to space. Before heading on to the video, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our updates. Number 1. L1527 and Protostar this is an image of a protostar in a cloud of substances responsible for its expansion. This picture was captured by the James Webb Telescope's near-infrared camera near CAM. This protostar can be found in the Black Cloud 1527. Above and beneath this star are cavities that were made empty by the ejection of this star. Also, this image's edges have an orange and blue glow. That's not all. This telescope captures molecular hydrogen from filaments that other star injections Shot. Additionally, the lower right and top left cavities edges have an appearance of straight edges. However, the lower left fringes and the upper right have a bent appearance. Also, the dust between the upper areas and the lower left is more than the dust between the blue region and the lower right. Number 2. Pillars of Creation This area loses stars in their thousands. After this loss of stars, all that is left is a sea of dust and gas. Dust is needed for stars to form, so this telescope's infrared instrument has to detect dust. Stars give out some degree of mid-infrared light, and this light can best be detected by UV near-infrared and visible light detect them best. The JWST's infrared instrument reveals two sources of stars. One of them is the thick, dusty pillar stars with a dusty atmosphere that gives them a crimson appearance, blue stars which are older do not have as much gas and material as they used to. Number 3. Dwarf Galaxy WLM This galaxy is not far. It's near the Milky Way. Nonetheless, it's 300 million light years away from the Earth and isolated. WLM is great for carrying out tests associated with the evolution ideas and the formation of galaxies. The reason for this is it is to interact with other systems. The Milky Ways are difficult to study because they entangle several galaxies. WLM's gas has the appearance of galaxies of the early universe. It does not contain lots of heavy elements as lots of these elements have been taken off by galactic winds. There are many amazing things about WLM, however, one of the most fascinating is that it allows you to study the development and evolution of stars in the galaxies. Number 4. Pillars of Creation Hubble and Webb in 2014, NASA's Hubble telescope was used to capture images of pillars of creation. Just like the Hubble telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope has also been used to capture images of pillars of creation. Its near-infrared vision reveals the presence of more dust around the pillars of creation. The dusty brown pillars are not as opaque, showing other red stars as they emerge. Although Hubble observes dust and gas pillars, Webb observes them more closely, so the deep details surrounding its image are a lot more reliable. The images captured by Hubble have a background that becomes bright green and deeper blue from yellow. Lots of stars close by are obscured by the dust around this background. Webb has a blue background that kicks out stars and hydrogen atoms. That's not all. Webb is also able to tell which stars have broken free. The views by Hubble and Webb both reveal local happenings, while Webb reveals more stars and Hubble denser layers of dust. None of them succeeds in showing the deeper universe. While dust successfully affects Hubble's images, Webb's reveals the interstitial medium. Number 5. Wolf Rayet 140 these are rings of cosmic dust around the star. Wolf Ray at 140. These clouds of dust are a result of binary stars interacting. In this image, the colors red, green, and blue tally with the image Webb's middle infrared device collects. Number 6. Neptune's Ring. James Webb's near-infrared camera captured this very catchy image of Neptune's rings. It has captured several images of other bodies in the galaxies. However, this is the first time we see an image of Neptune captured by the James Webb Space Telescope. Neptune surely has some rings. However, these rings have remained unseen for more than three decades. Well, with this telescope, we see Neptune in a very different way. This image reveals the chaotic, stormy atmosphere of Neptune. 
This planet is a giant ice planet known to have more methane than Saturn and Jupiter, which are generally regarded as gas giants. According to this image taken by Webb near infrared, methane does not have a blue color. This planet is not very bright when captured at near infrared wavelength. This is because methane absorbs red and infrared light substantially. Number 7. Interacting Galaxies Researchers use data from the Hubble Space Telescope and James Webb Space Telescope to keep track of light from the huge white elliptical galaxy at the left and towards the spiral galaxy at the right. They find out interstellar dust located in the spiral galaxy. This is an image of galaxy pair and is made up of visible light, Hubble's ultraviolet and Webb's near-infrared. The image for James Webb's near-infrared data reveals the galaxies reveal an overlap between the galaxy's bright white elliptical galaxy on the left and the galaxy's spiral longer arm. There is no interaction between the two galaxies, regardless of their proximity. Number 8. Multi-Wavelength View of NGC 1300 This is an image of the spiral galaxy NGC 1300, a combination of several observations to spot gas and stellar populations. Clouds of molecular gas, which create the raw materials responsible for the formation of stars, are highlighted by radio light, which the Atacam Large Millimeter and Submillimeter Array, ALMA, observe. Data from the Very Big Telescope's Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer, or MUSE, are represented in magenta and red. This data captures the effect of massive young stars. It does not end at this. It also captures the gas surrounding them. Hubble Space Telescope is used to capture ultraviolet and visible light. This light brings attention to hot and extremely young hot stars and dust lanes. These stars are captured in blue, and dust lanes are captured in gold. Researchers are interested in discovering where stars are being formed, and the Webb Space Telescope's visible light GH and high ultraviolet resolution infrared images make this possible. This way, researchers do not have to struggle when studying the oldest steps in forming stars in the galaxy. Number 9. Tarantula Nebula this image is a 340 light-year mosaic image showing the Tarantula Nebula light-forming area. It shows newborn stars that have never been seen. The most active area of this image reveals a cluster of very young stars. Red stars are planeted in nebula's dust. However, they can be spotted by the Webb telescope because of their near-infrared resolution. More advanced stars near this cluster reveal eight refraction spikes belonging to near CAM. The nebula contains a lot of complex hydrocarbons. This is because cooler gas becomes rusty when very far from hot newborn stars. Number 10. 30 Doradus Webb pays attention to the area around the main star's cluster and uses the long wavelength of light that its mid-infrared instruments collect. By doing this, it reveals a different image of 30 Doradus. There are several young stars in this cluster, and some of them become less bright. Also, dust and luminous gas spring up. These dust clouds are blue and purple and have some surfaces that several hydrocarbons illuminate. A huge portion of the nebula appears to spread out because of the likelihood of mid-infrared light showing what is happening. A bright protostar is visible when a look is taken at the top left part of the image. Other areas of the image show some darkness. These areas include the areas around the image's lower right segment. These areas are the densest part of the nebula dust and cannot be penetrated by mid-infrared wavelengths. Do you feel fascinated by these images obtained by the James Webb Space Telescope? Which of these pictures do you consider to be the most stunning? If you have reached this far, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. See you in another video. Until then, take care. Do tell us your views in the comment section.